Hallelujah. Father, I pray that you will speak through me as I preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I pray for hearts that will receive and hears, ears that will hear the word of the Lord and respond in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to speak about the gospel. What exactly is the gospel? Now here is a word, the gospel. It may, to me, I understand what it is. But I always want to give people the benefit of a doubt. Maybe they don't understand. You see, it's always good to do that. Do you know what the gospel is? What exactly is the gospel of Jesus? That is very important. The good news of salvation. Salvation from what? When Christians refer to the gospel, they are referring to the good news that Jesus Christ died to pay for the penalty of our sin. We might become, so that we might become the children of God through faith alone, in, through faith in, alone in Christ alone. And it's very important for us to understand what the gospel is. The gospel, it means good news. Now, good news, what kind of news? See, everybody has something that they may deem as good news, but to me, good news can be anything. Meaning of the word gospel, to bring or to announce good news. Both words are derived from the noun angelos, from the Greek word. It means a mess, where we get our word angel, messenger. In classical Greek, an angelos was one who brought a message of victory. Jesus Christ brought good news. He brought victory for us, amen? Or other political or personal news that may cause joy. It may cause joy. In addition, evangelism, that's the word in Greek, the middle voice from the word verb, meant to speak as a messenger of gladness. I wonder how, even as Christians, do we see ourselves that way, that we are bringing a message of joy and gladness. I, I want people to look at me and see hope in a world of hopelessness. You see, the disciples are seen as people who brought good news. And it may not sound like that in our world today, but because we focus so much on our troubles as opposed to the good news of what Jesus has done for us. Amen? And good news, to proclaim good news. The gospel is good news because it is a gift of God, not something that must be earned by self-improvement. It's not something that we earn. You see, it is something that is given to us. Why is it good news? Because you don't have to work for it. Thank God, hallelujah. Man, as Christians, we are blessed. I can tell you, I lived in India, and I've seen all kinds of ways you can go, get to God. One day, all the milk, there was no milk to be found in the shops. I mean, India has a lot of milk. So what happened to the milk? You remember that, that Dilip years ago? Ganesh, one of the Indian gods with the elephant head, and six hands, whatever it is. Whatever happened, he started to drink milk. Now, whether it was true or not. So everybody went and bought all the milk out. The people that have money bought, I don't know how many buckets of milk. They're all running to that elephant and dumping it on him. Somehow, it depends on how good you are, he can drink from you. 
There was milk running in the streets of Bombay on the road, but there's no milk for people to drink. See, it is all based on what you can do. How you can earn your way. Oh my goodness, see, this is... <laughs> so if I don't have enough money, I will not have enough milk to feed that elephant. A nation where there is millions of gods. You don't know which one is which. You can follow. And they have all kinds of rules. That you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. And then only God will accept you. But we have Christ, and then he did it all for us on the cross. All what you have to do is receive him. And to them that have received him, not to them that have done things for him. No, to them that have received him, he gave them the right to be called sons and daughters. Somebody praise the Lord. It is not based on what, what you've done. He gave it to you. And that is why following Jesus is the most beautiful thing that there is. The best news out there is the fact that Jesus died for you and you have been accepted as a child of God. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, and if you look at what is going on in the other places of the world, for example, in Islam, I also lived with Muslims quite a bit. We used to debate them in when I was in, at the university in India. My goodness. Even one of our friends was... We have to go to the university and protest because they want to take his life. I mean, he was a Muslim and he became a Christian. And so they want to kill him. <laughs> they want to kill him. By, in, according to them, that's what happens. Even your own parents can do that. But it is by works. I mean, we debate these people. And it is what you can do and how much you have done if it can be weighed in a scale, and if the good outweighs the bad, then you can go to heaven. I'm telling you, nobody can get to heaven by what they do. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, it says, For we are saved by grace alone, not of works, lest any man will boast. We are saved by grace alone. And my friend became a Christian in fact, he, he's in, in Saskatoon, Brother Thomas, Thomas Ahmed. His last name is Ahmed. And, uh, and Thomas, one thing with him that I, I came to know is this. His sister was married, but the sister was not able to bear a child. And they tried for many years. So what happened? His brother-in-law decided, because you're not giving me a child, I'm going to divorce you. And he threatened how many times? First time, he, he, the, word, the word in Arabic to say divorce is talak. Talak means if you say it three times, that means it's over. It cannot be reversed. So every time he will threaten her, talak, and she, please don't do it. And so finally... He did it. And so his sister came home crying. And so Thomas went to, he was not called Thomas. His name was Abdurrahman. So he went to India and we met there at the university. And then he decided to study philosophy. And when he was in the university, what he found out, they are doing comparative study of religions. And as he was studying, he, they studied different religions. And he found out that if he was to be a Christian, or if his family was to be a Christian, I mean, if they are following Christ, maybe his sister would have not been divorced. He found the words of Jesus that said, God hate divorce. And what God has put together 
Let no man put it asunder. And he said, my goodness. So he came to our group. We used to have a Bible study there. And he wanted to learn about that. He wanted to learn about the Bible. And then finally he gave his life to Jesus. Man, they sent a guy all the way from Saudi Arabia to come and debate him. Then the group of the Muslim Brotherhood met in Bombay. They met and they had a plan actually to hire a hitman to get rid of him. So the group of six or maybe seven people met and they planned out to get rid of Ahmed. And in India, of course, you can pay, you know, somebody. <laughs> they call them Gunda. The Gundas will come and get rid of you. They're just a hitman. So the news went, the three people, but there was one guy in that group that could not sleep at night. Thank God. <laughs> he couldn't sleep at night. And he, I learned a Canadian term. It's called spill the beans. <laughs> See, I'm becoming Canadian, hey? So he spilled the beans. The guy came and spilled the beans to, the, to our group. Then we said, now what are we going to do? If we keep quiet, the plans will be carried out. So we went to the university, to the, the dean of the university, and we went to the African Student Association, and we went and we made a rally. We came, people came with flags and all that. Oh, look at what these guy, the guys are going to do. And my goodness, they were trying to fight each other because who spilled the beans? I mean, so that's how Brother Thomas was rescued. Praise God. He got baptized. Man, we had good times. I remember those days at university. I, sometimes I feel like I need to go back here. Study Bible study there at the university. Talk to people about Jesus. Eh? People are going to hate you for something. Regardless, they will hate you. Might as well be Jesus. <laughs> yeah, people are gonna look gonna like you for anything. Just the way you look or whatever it is. But if I'm not gonna be like you because of something else, might as well be Jesus. Start something, young people at the Bible at the university. Get that professor saved. Hallelujah. Bible studies at the university. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is good news. To Brother Thomas, it was good news because his sister should have been still married and not be let go just because she couldn't bear a child. Good news, amen? God's plan of salvation for mankind is the gospel. The good news is God's plan of salvation for mankind. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his only begotten son. That is the good news. You see, he gave his son to pay for your sin and for my sin so that we cannot stay in that place where we are separated from God for eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. I'm telling you, there is a perishing coming. Maybe this Bible, as many people say, this is a, in the old draconian days, it's a, as old as a dinosaur, please don't talk to me about it. But I'm telling you, this is the only word, this is the only thing that will outlast everything. The word of God. I'm telling you, if you don't believe in it, I feel sorry for you. This is the word of God. Hey, if you want to be saved, you have to believe the word of God. Nobody should lie to you and tell you anything else. There is one thing it's awaiting all of us, but we all must die and stand before God one day.
But if we stand before him, we want to stand there knowing that we are justified. Amen? We are justified because of what Jesus has done on the cross. All mankind have been separated from God because of sin. And in Romans 3, 23, it says, for all, all, it doesn't matter who you are. Oh, yeah, man, I'm so good. I'm not like Jack the Ripper. I'm not like Al Capone in Moose Jaw. Did he even come to Moose Jaw? <laughs> Al Capone. <laughs> Some of you are wondering who that is. <laughs> I'm not as bad. No, no, that's not. It's nothing to do with whether you're bad by our standards. When I read about Jesus, it scares me off. This is one thing he said. You know what we have in our world? All the bad guys are locked up at the penitentiary in Stony Mountain. I know a lot about Stony Mountain because of Pastor Larry. <laughs> my pastor. Isn't that, God has a sense of humor. I was working with Pastor Terry and Pastor Larry in Moose Jaw. We're reaching the city of Moose Jaw. I got a lot of learning and training in Moose Jaw. But Pastor Larry, Pastor Terry used to be a guard in the jail in Stony Mountain. And Pastor Larry used to be an inmate. <laughs> and Pastor Terry is the senior pastor, and Pastor Larry is his assistant in Moose Jaw. <laughs> Can you see? God has a sense of humor. So one day, they made up a flyer, because I go every Saturday, I go and knock doors and tell people about Jesus in Moose Jaw. And they made up a flyer to reach the community. One is Pastor Terry with his jail clothes as a guard, and the other one is Pastor Larry with his inmate clothes. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. And they reach people for, with the gospel. Eh? All kinds of things there we did in Moose Jaw, following people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you can see the good news to Pastor Larry. He still now, you know what? He goes to Stony Mountain. He goes there. He goes there to visit as, now as a preacher, praise God. <laughs> and visiting people and telling them they have hope. They have hope. Amen? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You can be Dalai Lama. The Buddhist people are very, very very nice people. I mean, that's nothing to do with that. I, 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 I live with them. They're so nice, they can have nothing, not even a mosquito. I mean, but that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the fact that we are separated from God. It has nothing to do with whether you've done so many bad things. That's why people don't understand the gospel. The reason you cannot enter heaven is because you are separated from God. If you are 50 deep, feet deep in a, in, a, in a well, and the reason you can't get out is because there is no ladder, and there's nobody there to pull you out. We are separated from God. Whether you've sinned or you've killed anybody or you've lied or not, that's not the issue. Those are just symptoms of a condition. When you go to the doctor, I'm not a doctor. I have some of them here, my friends. But if you go to the doctor, they look for symptoms. They look at your tongue, they, your ear. I don't like that one, but they... So they can diagnose your condition. And when we look at people and they're lying, they're killing, or maybe like bin Laden and all that, 
those are symptoms of a condition that they have, which we all, the underlying condition of mankind is that we are separated from God, we have sinned against God, and we are heading down to hell. Have you ever heard hell being preached nowadays? Not in Wellsprings Victory Church. We'll preach it. Amen? There's no salvation without hell. Hell is a fact. It is a place. And Jesus came to save us from hell. And we are heading there. You're already in there. And he came to rescue you. And that's why it's called good news. When you receive it by faith, you will be saved. Can somebody say amen? amen. It says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. The wages of sin is death. So all what we are facing is death. And so we have an obligation as Christians. If you truly have experienced Jesus as Lord and Savior, then you have no choice but to share him with those who are around you. I think you and I will be doing a disservice to the city of Regina if we don't share the good news of Jesus Christ. Freely you have received Freely share it. Well, I am not qualified. I don't know how to. Invite them to Wellsprings Victory Church. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are going to hear about it. Our very existence now is to preach the good news and to introduce people to Jesus. The gospel of salvation in Christ Jesus will affect your life in three ways. Your past, your present, and your future. You see, many of us are focused on, well, Jesus is saving me because I have to get to heaven. This is not a ticket to heaven, even though it is. There is more to the salvation, to the gospel of Jesus. The good news is present, Past, present, and future. Your sins are forgiven. And now you must live here in victory. And then when we go to heaven, that is the end of it. That's where we're going to enjoy. But while I'm here, I must do the work of Jesus Christ. I must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Woe to us if we keep this to ourselves. There is a story, in, I think, in the Second Kings when the city of Samaria was besieged by Ben-Hadad of Syria. Syria, this is still happening, was happening a long time ago. They besieged the city of Samaria, and they cut the food supply, water supply, to the point where there is nothing to eat in that city. To the point where one lady decided, we can cook your baby for food today. This may not be in your world. Cannibalism happened. Even some of the lost boys from Sudan, they told me true stories of things that happened where people end up eating human flesh. But this is what happened in that story, that even a head of a donkey was sold for some silver. Well, if the donkeys are being eat, sold and eaten, then the military have nothing to ride their horses. There's only few horses left. So Samaria became very weak. And the prophet of God was there, Elijah. He said, this is what he said. He said, tomorrow. Because when that lady, the two ladies that one day ate the, the child, when the news went to the king, the king was so angry. He said, this is somebody eating now. We are now eating ourselves. This has gone too far. Instead of saying the Syrians are responsible, he turned around and said, Elijah, you are responsible. You are the prophet. You are the reason why we are suffering. Elijah said, no, 
But tomorrow, this time, there will be more food here in this place that everybody will have more than enough tomorrow. And the king's servant say, well, even if God will open the windows of heaven, nothing will happen. Elijah said, you will see it with your eyes, but you will not eat of it. So the next day, everybody's anticipating what is going to happen. And there's no food, but this, the prophet said, now that prophet is not like the prophets of today. <laughs> if he comes to town, people run because they don't know what he's going to say. I mean, if he says something, it always come to pass. Now he said, tomorrow there's going to be food, and people are looking, where is it going to come? Are there planes going to come flying and dropping food? They don't have that those days. So what happened the next day? There were a group of people that had leprosy. I mean, leprosy. How many of you have seen somebody with leprosy? Maybe not in this part of the world. You see them in India, and I've seen them in Sudan. And it's a very difficult, I mean, your flesh, you don't feel your hands. Even if you cut it off, you won't feel it. It, you're bleeding, your nose is, it's a very difficult. So people like that are taken and kept during the time in Israel outside the city. Some of you may want to watch that movie, Ben-Hur. It's a very good Christian movie, Ben-Hur. Still, when I watch it, just I get good goosebumps out of that. It's one of the movies I love. I don't like movies, but that one I like. That. You can see the lepers, they are kept outside the city. They unwanted, rejected. And family members will come, they will put the food there, and they will run. And these guys come in half. But if they are eating their own children, if they are eating a head of a donkey, what do you think is happening to the lepers outside? So the lepers decided, they said, you know what, we are going to die. We are dying here anyways. Let's go to the Syrians. Let's face the enemy. <laughs> Let's go to the, If they kill us, so be it. We are going to die anyways. Regardless, you stay here, we die. We go there, we die. So we might as well go to them. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe they will forgive us and they will give us something to eat. So these lepers got out. Brave enough, they went. They walked, they walked. And they walked. The Syrians, have, they built tents around. They have fortresses all around the city. Nobody goes out. Nobody comes in. The lepers walked in there. They said, maybe this is a trick. Because everything is there. It's like walking in here, and nobody's in this building, not even one person in this building, but there is food. They said, but who made this food? Who put all this here? But where are the people? Did, are they hiding under that? So the lepers, they said, wow, where are the people? All the Syrian army, gone. They left all their silver. They left all their gold. They left all their horses, all their cattle, everything, food. Some of them are still on the stove. I don't know if they do have that. But it's just like somebody ran for his life. But what happened is angels came at night. And they thundered the place. I'm telling you, angels are powerful. They shook the place. And those people run even in their underwears. Amen. When you're not ready, you're in their pajamas. They run. They left the place. They run for their lives. Because if you're not ready like that, you have no time to take anything. Man, they run, and the place where you can read that. I love the Old Testament. They left everything. So the lepers, they ate, and they ate, and they filled themselves with silver. They put everything. The next day they got up, they said, oh, there's still more, to the point where they cannot even carry it. And then they came to their senses. You know who those lepers are? Do 
Do you want to know who those lepers are? You and I. We are those lepers. God has blessed us. We are those lepers. And you know what they said? They, one of them came to their senses, and this is what they said. They said, what we are doing is not good. Now, I want us all to say that what we are doing is not good. Surely, God will bring a calamity on us if we keep this to ourselves. And I'm telling you, the gospel of Jesus is not meant to be kept to ourselves. Mine, I'm telling you, the people that you're going to share the gospel with are people that probably don't like you, are people that probably mistreated you. There are people that probably left you outside the city. They are, they, no, 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 I will only preach, preach to people I like. No, you will become like Jonah. Jonah was told, go to Nineveh. He said, I don't like those people. Just go. These lepers realize that what they are doing is not good. They cannot keep it to themselves. They came to their senses, and they said, even though God provided this for us, surely he's not going to be happy with us if we keep it to ourselves. So they got up immediately the next day. They went to the city. They said, look at us. No, don't take mine. Go there. There is a lot. <laughs> a lot of food. And the whole city of Samaria, everybody get, got out, and they were running through the gate. Those days, you have to have a gate as high, probably twice the height of this place, 40 feet high, because of enemies. So there's only one gate. If you watch those movies, gladiator movies, there's a door, and it's raised. And they broke through the door because they want to run to where the food is. Everybody was running. You know, the servant of the king was by the door. He was the one that said, I don't think even God, hope, and heaven, nothing like that will happen. He got trampled on food and he died. He didn't even see it. Mind you, there are a lot of people like that today. I don't believe that gospel. It's not true. <laughs> then you will not have anything to do with it. But I'm telling you, we are the ones who believe. Hallelujah. We are going to believe the gospel, the good news. It is because you believe and you put your faith in Jesus Christ that you are going to be saved. And so these so this, uh, lepers became the ones who rescued the city. But they could not help it. They did not let the resentment between them and the people of Samaria for having cast them out to stop them from doing what is right. We all have a responsibility as children of God to share the good news of Jesus with the world. Otherwise, if we are keeping it, this is not something to be kept. It is to be shared. It is to be Christ-like. For God himself did not withhold his son, but he gave him freely to die on the cross for our sins. It's very, very important. Amen? So the gospel of salvation in Christ will affect your life in three ways. The past, the present, and the future. Your past, Isaiah 43, 25, but I wipe away your sins because of who I am. And so I will forget the wrongs you have done. I like that translation, the New Living Translation. But I wipe away your sins because of who I am, and so I will forget the wrongs you have done. God will forget all the wrongs that I have done. Isn't that good news? Amen. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. He said, come and let us reason together. God is reasonable. He's not unreasonable. He is reasonable. He wants to talk to you. He is not casting you out. You just come to him. Let us reason together. Said the Lord, though your sins may be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. 
your past will be wiped out just as if you've never sinned. You don't have to work so hard. You don't have to go for a pilgrimage to Mecca. You don't have to earn. No, I'm telling you, this is all a gift. It's a, if you have to do those things, then it is not a gift. In any other religion, it is not a gift. But to us, it is a gift. That means it is free. Have anybody ever given you a gift and in the end they say, now pay me? No. Then it's not a gift. Take it. No, it is a free gift. But it's only in Christ, the gift of God. Hallelujah to all mankind. Receive it. Receive it. Yes, we receive it. Hallelujah. The present, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. God, at your present time, wants you to have life. Because sometimes we get to a place where we think, oh, this is all about getting to heaven. But man, I'm living here. I need to have life right here in Regina. Amen. Life for Jesus. Abraham had life. Man, he lived for God. And he made the Philistine jealous. Anything that he touched will come alive. He was prosperous. God is calling us to prosper. If we follow the Lord, he will prosper us. Amen? Your present. John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. Abide in me. You see, that's the key. Many of us, we want to be fruitful. We want to be successful. But we are not abiding. I mean, there is no branch that stays away from the main tree. It will die. That's when it's cut off. It has to be burned. But he said here, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Man, you are present. You can be fruitful. I mean, it's not only fruitfulness has nothing to do with the church only, even though it is. It is you being successful. Where is our gymnastic girl here? Wow. Hey, your daughter. Huh? In children ministry. We have a girl here that is doing wonders in gymnastics. I'm already promoting her to go to the Olympics and represent Canada. Five gold. My goodness, five gold. Let me try. No. I'll break myself. That's not... Amen. But she is... I, I rather have Christians running everything. Praise God. Because then righteousness will be in that place. Amen? Hallelujah. Jeremiah, your future. Jeremiah 29, 11. A very well-known chapter in the Bible. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. John 14, 2, my father's, Jesus said, my father's house has many rooms. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I not have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? God is he's gone to prepare a place for you. Your future is secured. So don't worry about it. See, I have one thing. When I was in Musja, I want to come to Regina. Since 2000. But it only happened in 2008. I was frustrated. I mean, in 2006, six, I became all, almost depressed. So what happened? All what I was doing in Musjo was falling apart. Because there are many of you here. You know God is calling you to go there. But you're so preoccupied with there that here you are nothing. When you worry about there, before you get there, you become useless where you are. So I decided, I said, I'm not going to worry about there because that is in God's hand. But for here, I can serve the Lord. 
Oh, I'm, Lord, when are you going to give me a wife? No, don't worry about that. That's in the future. Worry about what you can do now. But we want now. But God said, I worry. We want the things that are there here. So I decided, I said, you know what? I'm going to live my life as if Jesus was coming while I was in Musjo there. Just live my life. Be happy with the present. Because it is what you do in the present that will determine if you are going to be in Regina. It is called faithfulness. Because God only promotes people who are faithful. But the moment I was so preoccupied with Regina, I began to drive around Waskana. But the time was not there. I became depressed. I was not even enjoying Musjo anymore. But then I decided, I said, wait a minute. Let me just do serve the Lord in Musjo. Who knows, if Jesus comes and finds me, he will find my hands tied to the plow. Oh, I'm going to serve the Lord when I'm 50. No, no, no. If you're 20 and you don't serve him now, what makes you think you can serve him when you're 50? Oh, I'm going to serve the Lord when I get married with my wife. No, it won't happen. When I make money, then I'll start giving to the Lord. No, if you, if you can give him the 10 cents, you cannot give him the 50 cents. You cannot give him the 100 cents. Oh, I'll serve the Lord when I finish university. Yeah, when you finish your university, it will not happen. You have to serve the Lord with what you have. Now! Amen! Now we are going to serve the Lord. Oh, when I move on to Saskatoon, then I'll serve the Lord. Now is when we can serve him now. Because then he will promote us. Promotion is based on how successful you are at your present situation with what you have. Then he will promote you. He will advance you. God will not promote failure. He promotes success. Be successful with the little you have. When the Lord, when I did that, the pastor said yes. I always want to get the pastors yes. Said yeah, you can go to Regina. Man, we moved so quick. We bought a house. <laughs> But actually, if I would have moved in 2000, maybe it would have failed. I was immature. I would have not succeeded. Because timing is very important. God is more interested in you and in your well-being than you, even about yourself. And so leave him. Give him the place to do what he wants to do. Just be excited in your present situation. Amen? Amen. Be happy with what Jesus have done for you. Let's all stand.